What's up, everybody? I'm so excited to be back here. Welcome back to a brand new Adobe Live. I'm your host, Claddy, and I'm delighted to be back here with you. I just landed yesterday morning in the UK. Uh, I'm streaming from Manchester. Let me know where are you watching from. I'm always super excited to discover where you, my creative crew, are watching from. Ask any question. This is the beauty of the live. We're all here together so you can ask questions. This is a packed stream. We're going to be talking about how to create enchanting visuals, in particular using Photoshop and the Firefly powered feature. So let me know in the house. Hands up if you know already Adobe Firefly, if you had an experience or try to use Adobe Firefly already, and if you did or not try Firefly inside Photoshop. So please leave a comment in the chat. I'll give you a moment. I know that this chat have a little bit of a delay. So I always want to know, um, you know, what are you guys have done so far with these brand new features? Have you joined Max? Have you watched the keynotes? If not, I would strongly recommend to do so. I'm just about catching up about the you know, amazing amount of information and inspiring sessions that have been going down at Max in LA, but also are available online at max.adobe.com. Before we get started, don't forget here to subscribe on Adobe Live. There is a ton of content coming your way uh, pretty much every day. So let's go and open up our Photoshop and our web, web browser because we're actually going to start from the firefly.adobe.com new web app. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, I also have a landing page because I have created um, specifically for you a page which kind of gives you all the key information about uh, these new features. And uh, this is from my Max session. I had a lot of requests. Many of you wanted to, um, you know, have my session, maybe for your students, maybe for your class, maybe for your personal use. But I had a lot of requests. Um, the video is not available yet uh, and also had a little bit of internet issues. So I thought, why not have this wonderful platform here at Adobe Live to be able to share that with you so you always will be able to watch this on a replay. But moreover, you can watch it online and participate during the live. So make sure to stay active in chat. I look forward to hear and read from you. First of all, I want to say hi to Robert, Sean. I met Sean in person. That was so good. Brief, too brief as usual at Max, but so good to see you. Um, Robert, Michelle, Mohammed, lovely to uh, see you here. CJ and RB, what's up, Barbara? Okay, so let's go ahead and open the browser. And in the meantime, I'll give you a secret link, which is iamcloudy.com slash magic. And let's go ahead and see what happens when we open that link. So that will be the actual landing page that I've created uh, for my session, but I decided to share with you. So let me make sure that you can now see that as well. I can see the chat on YouTube being so uh, super active as well. Kenny, Damian, Nancy, what's up? Welcome everybody that is joining us here today. So you should be able to see my landing page right now. Perfect. And uh, let me know again in the house if you had the chance to use Firefly um, or not before. A big shout out here to um, Marek, Jess, I used some of the picture. I will use them today as well, of course, with their permission. So I want to give them a big shout out here. You have also a link to their Instagram profile. And let's go ahead and talk about a little bit about Firefly. So as I said, I created this landing page for you to get um, information about this brand new release that uh, was made uh, public and Max, or at least the news, because some of these tools are still in beta. Um, as I say, today we're going to be focusing more on Photoshop and Adobe Firefly and the Firefly uh, feature powered inside Photoshop in order to create an, uh, an enchanting composite. But here on this landing page, you got more details. So what is Firefly if you haven't heard about it yet? So Firefly is the Adobe artificial intelligence model that allows you to uh, use artificial intelligence to create and, and to speed up your workflow, basically to stack all those time consuming tasks so you can focus on creating. You can focus on brainstorming, on using your imagination uh, for your project while the machine does the work. 
This is the short version of it all. <laughs> but let's see how we can implement in our workflows. In particular, today we're going to be working with the image model. Now, if you access Firefly and you have a link here to uh, access Adobe Firefly, again, the website is firefly.adobe.com, you will be able to access uh, also Model 2. Now, just so you bear in mind, Model 2, you can see here in the What's New is in Beta. That means that the images that you generate with Model 2 are not available yet for commercial use. This is because there are still a few steps that need to be um, regulated and, and Adobe is really putting a ton of effort to make sure that everything that is done in the respect of uh, creatives. As you can see, as you can probably know already, all the images uh, that the model has been trained on are part of the uh, thousands of images that are within Adobe Stock. So they're already um, professional images that were already tailored for your needs as creative. But most importantly, they are connected to their author that will be then um, linked uh, in that process. So the, the um, image tool model has additional features uh, that comes in particular that generative match which is the session in the, the feature in beta that allows you to add your own images in order to replicate your style. But again, this is not uh, yet available for commercial use. So if you want to go ahead and have a play with the image model, you will see the best example is in the text to image. That will allow you to pretty much think, type, and transform your idea into pixels. So let's go ahead and get started. All you have to do is to go ahead here and click on generate. And by the way, we're going to jump in Photoshop in just pretty much a minute. Uh, the only reason why I'm showing you this website is to show you why I talk about this feature that I say they're Firefly powered. So Firefly is the standalone app. You can only at the moment use it on a web browser, but the features in particular, this one here that I'm going to show you is also available inside Photoshop and alongside text to image, also, we have generative fill and generative expand, but I will introduce them in just a moment when we head inside a Photoshop. So in text to image, it's pretty easy. Everything you think you type and you can transform into pixels. So in this case, I, I love to uh, end up on this gallery here. Once you go ahead and click on uh, uh, generate, you will see that this is a gallery of pretty much what other people have generated, but is amazingly uh, wonderful to also learn how to prompt because here you start to see uh, the prompt. So you can see here sailing ship inside a wine glass during a storm and that's the result. So you start to see what people type and what the result is. You can type, uh, for example, a vintage tab um, in an enchanted lush forest. Fill it with colorful flowers and robots. Let's just add something random like that. And as you can see, uh, I just had an idea. I just described it into words. And that's my suggestion for your prompts. You want to make sure that you use a descriptive prompt. That means they use nouns and adjectives in order to describe a specific scene. So as you can see here, we thought it, we described it. And boom, here it is. It just got transformed into pixels into an image. So this is the text to image uh, Firefly feature that we can access directly inside Firefly. Uh, but then what about the generative fill? So if I head back inside Adobe Firefly, and again, I only have one hour to throw a lot of content at you. This is going to be a pretty packed uh, live. So make remember that you can always go back, watch these at your own time. You can grab a cup of coffee for now. If you want, you can follow along, but you'll always be able to jump back and I'm going fast, but you'll be able to watch these again on a replay in your own time as many times as you want, pausing me and having fun with this amazing feature and trying them yourself. Generative fill is the other uh, image model um, uh, a feature that is powered by Adobe Firefly and that we will discover and we will use in this particular exercise for um, in, inside Adobe Photoshop. So that's why I want to show you, first of all, how does it work? So here you can go ahead and start by uploading your, your own image, or you can also simply drag it. So for example, if I had here, I have my lovely colleague, Maria, uh, that very kindly allowed me to use her picture, which also was taken. And those are all like my friends, UK creative. So this is Maria Deli Giorgi. Uh, the picture is taken by Jess. I like to um, credit creatives 
Jess Owl, which is the uh, person who took it, this picture. That's her Instagram if you want to go ahead and give her a follow or if you need maybe photography, if you are here in the UK as well. But let's go back. So all I've done is uploaded uh, Maria's image there. That's a portrait. But what if, you know, for whatever reason, Maria needed to use the same image but with a different background? Well, she can edit now her image or I can edit as a friend her image right away inside of Firefly by performing several actions. So, for example, the first thing that I can do here is to use uh, the background button, which is located at the bottom here of the browser, to very quickly, and as you can see, only took a few seconds, make sure that all the background gets selected and gets removed by the picture. If I need to add or subtract from the selection, I can do that at any time. So remember, in this case, as you can see, the pixels are disappearing. We see that checkerboard pattern because we are adding to the mask. The mask in this case was the background. Therefore, if you want to bring back some of the pixels, you will have to subtract. And remember, we're not subtracting or adding by the image. We're adding and subtracting from uh, the actual mask. So that's a very, very quick way to get rid of the way of the uh, background. But then uh, you can also describe what you wanted to replace it with. So for example, I can place the same image with uh, a field background. So uh, I can just write something like countryside um, fill. OK, and uh, all I've done here is to simply type and again, press generate. In my case, I just go ahead and click on enter. And then you will see here at the bottom of the browser, we will have the three option, three option that give us an idea of what, um, you know, with our prompt, uh, Adobe Firefly has transformed into pixels. And of course, you can add more. You will see how amazing it is. It matches the light. It matches the perspective. It understands that we have a subject in the foreground and that we're just talking about the uh, background in terms of a request of generating pixels. So these pixels already have the blurriness that a background will retain and also match the uh, our lovely Maria and the colors and the light and the shadows of the image to a T, which is quite perfect. OK, so now that we have a general understanding of how that works, and by the way, you can also add insert a remove to quickly add or remove content. Again, all you have to do is this case is click on insert. Maybe here we can go ahead once we keep this background here, uh, we can just insert in this area and maybe we can write something like airplane. And I'm going really fast here because I'm, um, you know, I'm conscious of time that goes always too fast during the live. I'm going to jump into Photoshop uh, real quick. But as you can see here, we have an airplane that is there, but it also kept the blurriness. So not only adds the content, but it takes in consideration everything that is around the image and uh, the entire layout of the picture itself. So now that we have an understanding on how this model works, and remember, we have done all of that on a web browser inside Adobe Firefly, we can go inside our new Photoshop. Make sure that you update Photoshop, although this release was already made public in September. Um, there is a ton of way in which you can use this tool. And I'm going to start this uh, session with you guys by introducing you the most important tools that are relevant for this workflow. The first thing that I'm going to go here is uh, uh, to go ahead and open a file like I will normally do. In this case, I'm just going to go ahead and hopefully find <laughs> uh, the file. Let's see if I can if I see how organized I am and how quickly I can find this file. Otherwise, we're going to just go ahead and drag it inside the app. Um, so if we go ahead, I just want to share the one that I've created for Max because I want to enable everybody that is here and watching live, um, you know, just just to use this image. This image, by the way, is by Marek. You will find this Instagram also on my uh, specific page that I created for this project is iamcloudy.com slash slash magic. You will find the link to everybody that is contributed and uh, allow me to use their picture, which I immensely appreciate. In the meantime, while the image is opening up and is loading, I want to say if there is any question in the chat, Mohammed is asking, can we extend an image in Adobe Firefly if we leave place and export as PNG? So Mohammed, we're going to do that in just a second inside Photoshop. The feature that you're talking about is called Generative Expand. It's part of the crop workflow. That means that once we select um, the crop tool inside Photoshop, you will be able to open up uh, 
directly thanks to the amazing contextual toolbar um, this feature which is generative expand so let's see what is going on here so it looks like it's taking a moment to load my image um is in my computer it might be the case that i need to restart my photoshop sometimes it happens i've been working very hard i have a lot of um, <laughs> i have a lot of app opened so it might be the case to simply close the window for a second and open it up again because we really want to open photoshop so <laughs> it was it wasn't open there but it looks like it's not working at the moment so let's go ahead and see if we can give it a second and if not i'm just gonna uh, leave my own page open so you can go ahead and have a little bit of a look at what we have there. And by the way, you can also uh, access the starter file here. So let's do that. While I go ahead and reboot my Photoshop, I can give you access to the uh, starter file. So you will be able to download the starter file. So this is what we're going to be creating today. This is the before and this is the after. The starter file is just right there at your fingertips. And while you do that, I'm going to uh, try to attempt to understand what is going on here it looks like we have to completely reboot uh, Photoshop at the moment my laptop is being open for a few hours so that might be the reason why let's go ahead and see what is going on here we have an app updated, we have everything updated. By the way, if you're wondering what I'm doing, I'm just heading to the Creative Cloud desktop. This is the hub where you can find all the apps and uh, all the beta apps. I have my Photoshop up to date. Everything is updated here. Uh, and let's see if we try to open an app, uh, if that makes it any better. <laughs> So if I see it, someone is talking about um, the credit, so we can talk about the credit, content credit uh, and content credential. This is an amazing, um, amazing tool that Adobe has put at our disposal. Let's see. I'm sorry, I have to uh, go ahead and restart Photoshop. It looks like otherwise our Photoshop pack session won't be able to happen. So thank you for bearing up with me um, while the beauty of the live allows me to um, do this while I'm talking to you. So let's go ahead and try to uh, completely quit and let's see if we can start it again. So I should be able to launch Photoshop again in just a second and uh, hopefully you guys are still or here with me. Here we go. We're launching Photoshop again. And in the meantime, I'm going to go ahead and see if there is any other question. Odari, thank you so much for joining us here. Robert, uh, Garrett, Thank you. Thank oh, I'm so happy that you guys had the chance to watch the session and Max. So the credit thing started already. Um, the content credential are, are pretty much information is the breadcrumbs, uh, the nutritional level that you can find inside an image that is for you to protect your work uh, and also to be completely transparent when you create image using generative AI. So if you do use this generative AI, the information will be uh, contained within your image. This is such an important uh, feature of using Gen AI with Adobe. And Adobe has been working a lot um, in these terms in order to make sure that, again, our content is protected. So now hopefully Photoshop will do us these wonderful favors of being with us and being able to work together. Here we have some more uh, Illustrator tool. Let's go ahead and see what is happening here. Andrew Canava in the chat, Jack, Odari. Uh, as you guys can see, I'm just waiting for Photoshop to launch. Let's see what is going on. And in the in meantime, you can go ahead and head to fireflight.adobe.com and have a play with the features that I showed you so far. So uh, Adobe Firefly, text to image and Adobe Firefly generative feel are the one that we have experimented with so far in order to hopefully show you very shortly how you can implement this feature within Adobe Photoshop. So for some reason, my Photoshop is not launching. Uh, I'm going to have to try and figure it out a different way to do that if that's not working. Uh, I have no understanding of that. Let's see. As you can see, the beauty of the live is that sometimes things don't work. That never happened to me before. <laughs> I only have one version of Photoshop. Worst case scenario, I'm going to try and see maybe if the Photoshop beta opens up. Maybe Photoshop beta can save our live uh, throughout the stream. It looks like the apps are not launching at all. And if not, we're just going to be uh, working inside 
Firefly and uh, create with a generative fill. And maybe we can see what we can achieve uh, with this graphic just by using Firefly. In the meantime, as you can see, I'm just gonna go ahead and try it a few times to launch. And sorry if I'm talking uh, about this process with you, uh, but this is really weird. Let me know in the chat, by the way, if that ever happened to you, if you click on an app and the lap app doesn't launch, uh, I'm just going to go ahead and ask a few questions in the background as well to see what is going on here. And if someone behind the scene might be able to give me um, a bit of a hand to understand why that happened. Again, it might be just completely my desktop playing up. Um, and if not, we're just going to be talking about the other uh, Firefly features. So for some reason, not the beta, not the normal Photoshop is actually opening up on my desktop. And... Let's go ahead and play a little bit more with a uh, generative fill. And I can show you already how did I create part of the image uh, with generative fill. Maybe we can create the basic, wait to see. I probably will have to reboot my, my computer, but uh, if I do so, I will probably lose you. So let's go ahead and use that same starter file. And uh, let's go ahead and try to make it work using just Firefly. By the way, you will be able to use this specific feature within Photoshop as well, if you're a lucky and Photoshop <laughs> opens up unlike me right now. But as you can see, this is the actual image that I've shared with you. And what I started to create is, first of all, to subtract uh, the element that I do not want in this picture. And I started with element such as, uh, you know, such as this little bar here that is uh, around uh, my subject because I didn't want to uh, keep that element inside my image. And all I have to do is to simply click on remove after I select the remove option here inside Firefly. And then you will see that the actual app um, is uh, there and it will automatically allow you to remove anything you want. I'm going to go ahead and zoom in to show you the difference. So that is absolutely gone. I haven't done anything and simply click on remove. And when you work in Photoshop, the correspondent way of using this tool is to leave your prompt um, clear. Now, I'm just going to go ahead and pop you guys on a very brief hold and I will be back. I just really want to make sure that I can show you some of this stuff in Photoshop. Uh, that was the whole point of this stream. If not, as I said, we can keep editing and creating this enchanting image inside Firefly and then maybe we can and spice it up in Adobe Express. There is a ton to share and a ton to do anyway, but I want to try one more time to see uh, if we can get our Photoshop running and I can share this workflow with you. So I'll be back with you very, very shortly.
Hello everybody, thank you so much for your patience. I managed to figure everything out, so I'm back. Photoshop is back. <laughs> no, Sean, you did not break the stream. But most importantly, we got our dear Photoshop with us, so we will be able at least to do some magic together. I'm so excited, and thank you so much for everybody uh, for being so patient here. We're back, let's get starting again. Thank you so much. Welcome back. Okay, so let's get uh, let's let's go back into the desktop. You should be able to see my desktop now, and I'm gonna go ahead and open the image here, and uh, hopefully we will be able to do so uh, real quick from my computer. I can start with a starter file. As you can see, it was the same starter file that we started to play with inside Adobe Firefly, and we got a fantastic result by using the remove option. Now, the remove option is the same that you can use with uh, many different tools inside Photoshop. Uh, you can go ahead on my landing page, imcladi.com slash magic to be able to see the different way I present different tools that are also beyond tools that are powered by Adobe Firefly. We have the wonderful remove tool that also allow you to create um, selection pretty much using it like a brush. So all you have to do here is to go ahead and use this tool like a brush uh, so let's go ahead and make sure that is visible by using the caps tool and then you can use the brackets in order to select any area you want and again all you have to do is to simply click and drag on the area that you wish uh, to use uh, to select it and uh, the um the, the tool that we want here has got the little magic. So I was using the spot healing brush because it looks the same. Uh, but as you can see, the result wasn't as good. The spot healing brush is used for smaller area. While we have this brand new remove uh, tool that will allow you to tackle bigger area here. And as you can see, also we have an uh, area that just sort of gives an idea of what we're selecting in pink, showing up this overlay. Make sure to select only the pixels of the image that you want to um, that you want to remove and not perhaps getting into the subject because that will change the way that the result comes to you. And then another way is to go ahead and use our selection. Our selection, so the marquee tool, the lasso tool, any the object selection tool, any uh, tool that you use to create selection will also allow you to introduce that generative field use of remove. So in this case, you can see all I've done is to use the lasso tool to create a rough selection. And then here from my contextual toolbar, which is one of these brand new tools that will allow you to uh, create these new, um, to, to introduce these new features inside your workflow. So as again, the contextual toolbar is there to help us to see the next suggested step. So those are curated steps that will be suggested to you. They will make it so much faster to work uh, with Photoshop if you're a pro user. Well, if you're a beginner, these uh, suggested steps will just very make it seamless and intuitive for you to discover um, new tools inside uh, Photoshop. So the selection tool, the selection workflow simply means once you select one of the selection tool inside Photoshop, will open up the doors to generate feel. So now with my selection created inside my image over here, you can see the little marching ends at the corner. We can go ahead and use the contextual toolbar to click on generative fill. Now this will open up with a prompt and then a button in this case, generate, and you have the option to leave it prompted. So to type like we did before from the text to image in order to transform your idea into words and then into pixels or to leave it unprompted. If we go ahead and leave it unprompted and simply click on generate, what we're telling Telling the Adobe Firefly powered feature inside Photoshop are to have a look at the image, understand what is going on, what is the background, what is the foreground, what are these pixels belong to, and what is the best way to replace it. So look at here. On the right corner, we have the result that we have obtained with the remove tool. We weren't able to be so close to the subject, but why if you go ahead and now select these pixels. Uh, like we did before, and we go ahead and use the generative fill again, you'll see that we tend to have a better results with generative fills simply because we have uh, uh, the machine that has a better understanding of the image. But I want to go ahead and uh, kick off with one of the features that uh, uh, I think Mohammed was asking in the chat, which is the generative expand. Generative expand allow you to resize your image, scale it and fit into different resolutions. So all you have to do here is to go ahead and simply select the crop tool because generative expand is part of uh, our crop workflow. 
and uh, we can go ahead and resize the image over there but you can also move the image as uh, as much as you want uh, so all i have to do here is to simply click and drag one of the corner of this uh, bounding box in order to crop the image and you can also you move the image within uh, the new canvas that you have created and again in this case i'm going to go ahead and simply click on generate you want to make sure that here at the top of the option bar your generative expander uh, is selected for your fill and in this case by clicking generate what you're telling again Photoshop is to have a look at the image and then go ahead and fill the empty areas uh, the transparent pixels with pixels that are relevant for the image so differently from the content aware field that we'll be looking at the just neighboring image as you can see the results are absolutely astonishing these are uh, machine power technologies and generative AI Firefly inside Photoshop is looking at the entire image, looking at the subject, looking at the background and really going to fill and make uh, the space that you need for your graphic with relevant pixels that will complete your image seamlessly. In fact, it looks like the image was just taken in this specific aspect ratio and you can go ahead and change that as many times as you want i use that a ton especially when i create you know i create a lot of vertical content for my instagram channel and then i have to turn it into a presentation or maybe into a youtube cover well very quickly i jump into photoshop and simply expand it and the machine does the work for me because i do not have any time to waste on this task i want to worry more about the concept and how to change and how to get into these enchanting vibes for my uh creation and for my composite so how do I move forward and I transform this fairly regular picture that was taken in London we can see it got the London eye uh, in the background how do we transform it and we just relocate it somewhere else somewhere else more magical in order to make any shot more engaging and more entertaining well I'm gonna go ahead and start by isolating my um, subject very quickly by using our uh, friend the object selection tool and by the way now that we have all these tools at our disposal please do not forget uh you know that the most important tools that are already your best friend inside of photoshop and most importantly don't forget that these features are powered by you so the better understanding you have of uh, photo composition or in general photography or illustration or painting depending on you know what is your speciality you will be able to create better results so again here i'm just gonna go ahead and add a little bit more uh, to my selection if you need to do so you can always switch from different selection tool just make sure to add uh, by using the shift tool and then you can swap between the marquee tool and any other selection in order to uh, select any pixel you want and add it to your selection in this case you can also uh, use the um, alt key or control key uh, option key on a mac in order to remove any pixels if you wish to do so okay and in case i'm happy with your selection here i can perhaps use a little bit more pixel i can do that by again leveraging the power of the magic contextual toolbar which allows me to expand my selection i will expand of about 10 pixels and then now i'm gonna go ahead and again thanks to this button which is inside the contextual toolbar i will be able to invert my selection so what i've done here is went and focused on uh, my subject first then inverted my selection and got into uh, the background and now I'm gonna go ahead and use the generative field to perhaps select a, a different scene you can also subtract from this scene so for example if I want to focus on a specific area of this image in this case just for the top I can go ahead and just use the option tool uh, which is also sorry the option key which is also the alt key uh, if you're working on a mac to just isolate the area that i do not want it looks like here i'm not selecting many pixels i'm going to try to go very very fast to make up the time that we missed here but this is the best way that you can start as you can see i've isolated different areas and what if i want to remove for example the sky let's see for now i want to maintain the sky as it is again i can go ahead and jump from in the to the marquee tool and again using the alt option i can simply deselect the pixels that i do not wish uh, to create i'm not sure what this error uh, is about but 
I know that probably I will have to restart my laptop, so I apologize for that. I'm just gonna take this selection as it is. Let's see what happened here. I'm gonna use the generative fill, really push the machine to see what it's gonna uh, do for me, even with this weird selection. What I want here is to change the London Eye and this particular scene into something uh, different. Maybe just having a lake, uh, lakeside with just forest or lush forest now as you can see something that i want to highlight and it will need to be fixed is that we have some pixels left for our london eye what happened there is that if we do leave those pixels um, our firefly will read in within this uh, information so once it goes and it creates our image and our uh, selection and our uh, new content it will take care of these specific pixels and we do not want that we completely want to get rid of this part of the image and that's why something that i want to stress beside making descriptive prompts i want to recommend to also be very careful with your selections because if you do not want to retain part of the images in this case i do not want to retain any part of this area over here you want to make sure that you sort of like delete it from your selection and again you can go ahead and play with this selection as many time as you want so all i've done here is to simply use uh, the shift key to bring it in the area that i want to remove and i'm just going to do the same here just so it's a little bit more neat just like so and then i'm going to go ahead and simply type what i want so i want a, a lake um lakeside forest lush forest let's see sometimes the simple the best i'm just gonna leave it like that um i would have probably just wrote lake waterfront and then forest but at the moment it probably is going to start reading just the coast uh, that is selected here some of the three and you will see that in just a few seconds um we will have a result which is exactly what we wanted so that's how um you know the importance of making a selection getting rid of the london eye getting rid of any building will allow us to have easier and faster access to the result that we desire and again if we want to remove uh, these objects over here in this case we can very quickly um use something like the remove tool making sure that all your la sample all layer are selected as you can see what i've done here is created a brand new layer because you cannot use the remove tool on generative layers that appear here inside our layers panel and by the way look how cool they all retain as the name of the layer that what i've typed inside the prompt i think that that's such a huge useful feature um, that will allow you to create um uh, to create a selection i got distracted because i seen a message from mohammed shiraz uh, what about selection with a quick mask that's a fantastic way of creating a selection. I'm just going to show you in just a second. Thanks so much, Mohammed, for the shout out. Uh, I'm very happy to show you that. But also I want to show you how you can implement uh, the remove tool, even if you have generative layers. So just simply create an empty layer. Make sure that you select sample of layer from the top option bar and then go ahead and paint over the area that you wish to remove. You can also circle and it creates uh, the area by itself. But as you can see, in just a second, I've went and removed the area that we do not need now let's go ahead and jump into um the um the quick mask and uh, i can do that by clicking on this icon over here and uh, as you can see the quick mask oops let's jump back into the quick mask over here and we will be able to select um item inside the area that we wish to um change or maybe we wish to uh, use the generative field to implement new content again you can use as many uh, different subjects and many different selections as you want probably the select subject is one of my favorite that's why i keep mentioning that um i've i'm not going to use that quick mask tool it looks like again i probably will have to restart my photoshop uh, but again any sort of selection tool is absolutely thumbs up for this workflow as you can see the generative fill appears inside your toolbar uh, at any time and you can go ahead and write whatever you want in this case i'm gonna just write something like night sky with northern lights or maybe um aurora borealis i'm not sure if that's how you pronounce it in english 
uh, but I did do some attempt to create in the northern lights which is this wonderful effect that you can see uh, of these uh, uh, neon lights in the sky and when I typed northern lights I didn't have the same result as using the proper scientific name of Aurora Borealis as you can see we have some beautiful color that comes into the sky um, we do not have a full night sky because again in my selection I have left if I go ahead and uh, select the pixels that I've used here uh, I left some of this area of the uh, lighter sky and uh, Firefly simply as red as me deciding to keep in that color within my image and uh, as a match the sky again creating a seamless transli transition between the pixels that I want to retain uh, with the pixels that I've now generated and that went and implemented these new items in this case the Aurora Borealis in the sky but it's given us some stars which really makes it magical anyway so how do you go ahead and check if you want to see different options? Maybe when you've already generated a, a specific items. Well, we have a, our wonderful properties uh, panel that allows us to see uh, the different options that have been generated for us, but also it will allow us to generate more. So if maybe you're not happy with this specific selection, you can go ahead and uh, add more or create another one. And remember, those are always um, elements that are non-destructive. So as you can see, if I click on the eye icon at the side of my layer, I can uh, hide at any time what the pixels that I've generated and uh, I have no need, if I perhaps do not wish to use them, uh, to keep them in my image. And most importantly, if we want to go back to our very original image, I can group everything that we have created so far and our original image is still there and is preserved. Uh, so it's not being distracted at all, despite the fact that we added so many different layers to it. Okay, so I think I'm just going to go with that. I would keep playing as much as you potentially want. I'm just going to add another item before I show you something very cool that you can use with this specific feature. So I'm just going to go ahead here and add another selection. And I'm going to go ahead and simply add like a wooden cottage. And uh, again, I'm just going to go ahead and type what I'm thinking you know, I can focus on really uh, start to convey the mood and thinking what I want to create and what I want to communicate with this image. So how do I create this enchanted feeling within my image? And then I can just use the generative feel. I probably misspell it. That's why it's not. <laughs> it, take, uh, uh, it takes, you know, a thousand languages, but sometimes you need to be able to still spell things correctly. So in that case, uh, I misspelled and that's why we were just getting um, a piece of cottage, it looks like, in the background. Uh, another thing, and that's why I love to experiment live here with you, is that is important uh, in terms of the size of the selection, but look how wonderfully this cottage was implemented within my composition. This would have taken ages to find the right cottage either to paint it in and most importantly to match it in terms of lights in terms of structure within the picture we have here as you can see the tree uh, it just simply been has been extended to cover the cottage as well and again as usual we have different options and you know another thing that is worth mentioning because this is part of the background that has retained the blurriness of the background so therefore it doesn't look like a simple cutout that has been just slapped and pasted there but also the blurriness and then the perspective has been preserved while generating these brand new pixels and now let's go ahead and create something extremely cool um, that i want to show you which is uh, the opportunity uh, to create a reflective um, um, surface as you can see we already have a lake here so it could be absolutely fine but what is missing is that now because we have introduced stuff like the house uh, the green sky this no is not matching the reflection that we currently have inside our lake so i'm just going to go ahead here and start by selecting uh, all the lake area that i'm more interested in so it looks like this top area over here and again i'm just using the shift um in order to the shift 
key inside my keyboard to go ahead and add any area uh, that you want to add to your image. So if you want to add back this area, if you want to use the quick mask, if you want to use any other tool that you prefer, just please go ahead and use it. But the most important part here is that I'm going to go ahead and create a reflection by simply writing something like leg surface with reflection. Now, part of the tips here, um, I'm just going to try to summarize it. One is take advantage of the contextual toolbar. Two, be very careful with your selection uh, because depending on what you select, what you leave and what you uh, include in your selection, Adobe Firefly is going to look at the image and understand what to uh, keep and what to preserve in, in terms of creating a seamless translation transition. Then the prompt you want to create the easiest uh, shortest descriptive prompt that just describe what you have in mind in order to be able to transform into pixels and look at the result here we have these wonderful uh, green tones that now appear in the water we have this brand new forest that we have implemented the appear inside the water we have also the cottage reflection but moreover we have different options that allow us to choose which uh, part of the image we want to keep or not I'm quite happy with this because I really wanted the green. Again, you can go ahead and generate as many as you want. All of these items are, in fact, non-destructive. So if you want to go back, if you're not ba happy with it, if you want to show maybe to your client, uh, to your uh, art director, the power of maybe introducing a, a, a reflective surface, you can just simply do uh, this wonderful before and after. Like I love doing, I tend to put all my feature, all my um generative fill and brand new editings in one layer and then just using the eye icon you have this before and after that shows you in just a few minutes how far we were able to go in terms of editing my image now something else that i would recommend and i know that we have uh, no much uh, time uh, uh, to create um further but again we have already made i think an amazing result just by using a few prompts and as you can see there were not even many layers i think there are less than 10 layers another suggestion between the contextual toolbar um using uh, the uh, appropriate selections using appropriate prompts so descriptive prompts is also to uh, make adjustment to your image at the end. This is because you really want to make sure that everything included what is generated uh, in the image sort of gets uh, together. And you can use uh, the new adjustment presets or you can use uh, older techniques that you perhaps have used before like camera roll. Now, the way that I tend to do that is to transform uh, all my uh, layers, all my image into a smart objects. So I'm going to select all my editing. So I'm just going to put that editing and then here is my original image into uh, one single smart object now don't forget about these best friends of your i know that we have generative fill we have generative expand that are absolutely amazing uh tools uh, for our creation but don't forget about things like uh, you know the object selection tool the quick mask or also smart objects i'm going to right click into the image and convert everything into a smart object this will allow us to work again non-destructively why applying filters or enhancing our image but most importantly it will create another document so if we go ahead and double click inside the smart object you can see that we have already uh, another document another photoshop file in this case is a psb that contains all the layers so if at any time perhaps i want to go ahead and get rid of the selection uh, of, of the reflection i can do that by working inside my smart object and once i save or close the file and i that back into my original file that will be removed and again if i change my mind i can go back and do that as many times as i want now, I talked about uh, this amazing feature, which are the new adjustment preset. Again, the contextual toolbar will allow you to have a quick jumpstart to go ahead and navigate their older, all, um, over 30 new uh, adjustment. Those are fantastic. Either if you're a pro or if you're a beginner, first of all, you can hover on them to see the result taking place in just a click by hovering if you start clicking they will be added and overlapped inside your layers panel uh, and if you are a beginner those are fantastic i'm going to go ahead and just pick one 
I'm gonna use this color pop, maybe brighter is what, what we need for this image. Uh, if you use any of these, and I'm just gonna just click a few to see, uh, they uh, are gonna go ahead and start to introduce you to levels, uh, to brighten and contrast, to you, to all these adjustment that layers that maybe as a beginner you didn't have the chance to play with, but now you start to get familiar with them. And if you're a pro, this will allow you to jumpstart your editing and then simply click and add back on these properties uh, in order to adjust them as you wish. But what if, if you want to implement uh, something like a camera raw adjustment, which is what I tend to do usually on every image. Well, you can do that as well. Again, I'm using a smart object to make sure that everything is encapsulated together. And then also I can go ahead inside my filter and use my camera raw filter to add um, anything that I want. I can lo add local, I can add global edits. In this case here, I'm gonna go ahead and use the linear gradient, which is one of my favorite, allows you me to add uh, uh, any filter and effect in a form of a gradient. So in this case, I'm gonna go ahead and click and drag to make sure that everything that is in red is the area that is affected and it's quite dark inside this image. So I can simply go ahead and bump the exposure a little bit more and also maybe play with my shadows. And as you can see, all the details of the image that were hidden inside a shadow will be revealed. And then you can go ahead and do anything else as you want, like in this case, perhaps bring a, a little bit more of details and effect. Uh, let's go ahead and add some effects here by adding a little bit of texture inside our image, grain or dehaze if you wish to do so. Uh, I love to add a little bit of grain, especially when I'm adding a lot of digital effect, a lot of blurred image that were added digitally. Uh, adding grain just sort of brings back the image into a little bit more of a you know real photo. Now, I will always recommend to zoom in. I love grain by see people overdoing their grain so much. So always make sure to try and go to 100%, if not even more, and try to look at a lighter area of the image. Usually the sky is a fantastic way um, to see what you do with your grain and to make sure not to over add this feature. And again, you can go back in terms of your general um, editing and really do as much as you want, even in terms of changing temperature of your image of also color grading it. So there is so much that you can do. And also you can see that before and after uh, we kind of brought the image together uh, inside here, this camera raw filter. Click on OK to apply it. And because we have a smart object, it will be applied to the image. Unfortunately, it is that time. Pretty much in a couple minutes, we will have to say goodbye. I want to do a quick recap for this stream. I'm so thankful for all of you that have stuck around, uh, despite the fact that we have some technical issue at the beginning but then we managed uh, to implement and I was so happy to show you how to use the contextual toolbar, how to prompt, how to use the Firefly feature inside Photoshop. Remember, this is uh, um, the image model that we're implementing with a generative fill and a generative expand. Um, in this last minute that we have, you know, I want to show you that you can do that as many times as you want. Uh, perhaps if I want to use this image as an image for example, for um, my YouTube channel or uh, maybe other uh, different images here, you can go ahead and reset whatever is uh, your aspect ratio. So in this case, I can change into a 16 by nine. I can change the size to whatever I want. I can move my image perhaps inside my canvas and then uh, I can use the generative expand at any time to change any image, even if we already used it, you can go ahead and use it again. You can save the first file and use it for your vertical format and then use the generative expand and use it for something else uh, as, for example, uh, your uh, YouTube channel. Well, it looks like uh, the Photoshop gods are not with us today. <laughs> there is another fantastic way in which you can do that. And I know we are like about to say goodbye. You can create a selection if you wish for um, your image uh, by simply doing what we've done before with the selection tool. So go ahead and click and drag. I, I, I can't use Photoshop at the moment, <laughs> but you can create a selection and use the generative fill and it will obtain exactly the same results. So go ahead and have fun with Adobe Firefly. Go ahead and experiment with these fantastic features. Don't forget that you have my landing page that will kind of breaks down everything and more and also gives access, access to your starter file uh, that you can get absolutely for free to have fun with these features. As usual, it was an absolute pleasure to come back and be here with you. And I cannot wait to see you very soon. Don't forget to leave a comment and to subscribe for more content here on Adobe Live. I will catch you very soon.
Bye, everybody.